Around Town is made possible by funding from Comcast and is produced in partnership with Boston Neighborhood Network. First Literacy is a nonprofit organization that works with adult learners, adults who need to improve their English language skills, either native born adults who dropped out of school for some reason before they got their high school diploma, or foreign born who've moved to America to pursue their dreams and goals. My accomplishment is not only due to my hard work, but also the generous support of my friends at First Literacy. With a part-time job and heavy course load, and the preparation for dental school admission test, time management become very important part of my life. Luckily, I was given the flexibility that I needed. That is how first literacy supports students, not only the events you see in the public, but also behind the scenes. We provide support for adult basic education for adults <clears throat> and their families here in the greater Boston area I have been doing so for, for 25, 25 years. And as Jeff was saying, through grants to programs, 19 programs in greater Boston, grants for, for classes, child care, other support services. Uh, also by professional development and other uh, technical assistants have uh, classes for, for teachers for them to continue their education and for others. And then thirdly with, schol with uh, scholarships for people who finish those programs and who are starting college. We provide $1,000 scholarships for them in their first year and for some people in their second year of college. You're going to be uh, very surprised that a spelling bee can be this much fun. And uh, I think the, the thing about it is the various businesses in town that are here, uh, we compete all day. I work at Eaton Vance competing with all of these people. Uh, and when we get here at night and uh, get to spelling, we are competitive as we are during the day. So it's very, very funny. Good evening. I, I, there was a, a look of shock on some of your faces when you heard you were actually going to be on television for this particular co show of hands for those who were shocked. And say, yes, don't. This, this guy's not lying. We normally don't lose people in the first two words, so, so not to worry. And, and Jeff said that you know, it, they always like to have me come back. The real reason I'm here is because my last name is so long and some people find it hard to pronounce. Um, you would think in a day and age when we have anchors and reporters with names like Miklaszewski and Brzezinski and Kashwahara that the name Binswanger wouldn't be that hard, but I take a certain amount of pride in the fact that I have been misintroduced more often than most of my colleagues in broadcasting. I've been introduced as Jim Bishtinger, Joe Bongwater, at a college audience. Um, <laughs> but my favorite, true story, favorite was at the State House. Uh, then Senators Kennedy and Kerry were in attendance, Governor Weld, and a woman actually introduced me as Jack Bangschlanger. So, <laughs> Over cocktails or dinner later on, feel free to call me Jack, as apparently others do, and it works very well. Are we ready? Let us first introduce the participants in the first swarm, starting from left to right. Brown Brothers Harriman, the Cabot Corporation of Boston, Cambridge Trust Company, El Centro, yeah, please feel free to cheer for your teams. El Centro del Cardinal, Eaton Vance, and Stone Turn Group. Good luck to all six teams. We begin with our first word of the 24th annual corporate spelling bee, and that word is sausage. Hold up your signs, if you would, so we can check the spelling of the word sausage. And everybody moves on. Our next word is foreordain, to determine or appoint beforehand, predestined. 
pens down, please. Let's have your signs up so we can check the spelling for foreordain. Everyone moves on. Congratulations. Our third word in this first round is apparel. All right. If we will hold up our sign, please. The word is apparel. And everyone moves on. Congratulations. Our next word, omissable. Possible to omit. Time is up. If we can put our pens down and hold up our cards, please. The word is omissable. It's no A, so the team on the far end loses one flag. Two flags down in this particular round. Our next word, oh, three, sorry, three flags down. Our next word, cacography, bad handwriting or bad spelling. Signs up, please, for the word cacography. We lose one flag in the back. Is that it? All right, well done. Our fifth word. Moving on to our sixth word. The next word is aperceive. To perceive something while being conscious of perceiving. Pens down. Signs up, please, for the word aperceive. All good? All right. We move on to our next word. The word is paraplegia. Complete paralysis of the lower half of the body, including both legs, usually caused by damage to the spinal cord. Can we hold up our signs, please, for our judges? All good. Very good. We move on. Our next word, very popular with children. The word is tonsillectomy. Surgical removal of tonsils or a tonsil. Okay, can we hold up our signs, please, for the judges? The word is tonsillectomy. In the back? They have, they have two flags. Are we still a flag up in front, though? No, it's gone. Our winner, Eaton Vance, for the first round. Congratulations. Sometimes people will, will contact us just from the phone book because of our name, and we'll refer them to a number of programs depending on, on what their, their need is. And so we support the programs that have the classes uh, and tutorials and other services to help, uh, to help adults uh, to learn English with their basic literacy skills, math skills, to get their high school equivalency. Uh, to improve their uh, computer skills, a very important part of uh, 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 pre preparing for both their careers and for college now. Um, and so we refer them to, to those programs. We lose the Boys of Summer, but we keep Bank of New York Mellon and the folks to my right from American Stock Transfer Company. We're down to two. Our next word is irascible, prone to outbursts of temper easily angered. The senior partner considered the right to be irascible as one of the perks of his job. The word is irascible. Pens down, signs up please for the word irascible. Our winners on the end, moving on to our final competition. Congratulations to the American Stock Transfer Company. Yes. Well done. Well played. And we're down to two teams. We move on. Public Spellevision versus IBM. Our next word, acephalus. Headless or lacking a clearly defined head. 
having no leader. Let's hold up our signs for the judges. Acephalus, and they both move on. Our next word, our next word is wraith, an apparition of someone that is believed to appear as a portent just before that person's death. And appears to be a very easy word for our two combatants as they both have their pens down. You both happy with your answers? Both teams? Oh, if you hold your signs up for the word wraith, and we move on. Our next word is chitin. Any of various marine mollusks that live on rocks and have shells consisting of eight overlapping plates. Pens down, signs up, please, for the judges. And advancing to the next round is Spellavision. Congratulations. We will see you in the finals. And there are two teams left. Team Grub and the Bards and Bees. Our next word in this fourth swarm is Koipu, a large aquatic South American rodent having webbed feet and a long tail. Pens down, signs up please for the word Koipu. And our winner is Team Grub. <laughs> Congratulations to all of the participants. This is the deepest we've ever gone in the Spelling Bee competition. Congratulations. Two teams. Okay, we will keep going with our next word, ocelot. A nocturnal wildcat of brush and woodland from southwest North America. Everybody ready? If you're both ready, hold up your signs, please. Ocelot. You both move on to our next word. Our next word is inchoate, being in a beginning or early stage, incipient, imperfectly formed or developed. Hold up your signs, please. Both correct, inchoate, we move on. Our next word is prolegomenon. You heard me. A preliminary discussion, especially a formal essay, introducing a work of considerable length or complexity. Signs up for the judges, please. They're both right. Okay. Our next word. Seborrhea, a disease of the sebaceous glands characterized by excessive secretion of sebum or an alteration in its quality, resulting in an oily coating, crusts, or scales on the skin. Everybody finished dinner? Just checking. Okay. These guys are too good. Signs up. Everybody happy? Seborrhea. We move on to our next word. Our next word is grisaille, a style of monochromatic painting in shades of gray used especially for the representation of relief sculpture. Signs up, please. Both are wrong. Houghton Mifflin Harcourt is our winner for this particular. Excuse me? I can't see. They have two flags. I, well, I can't. One flag left. Okay. Correct. One flag left. So they would become the winner because there are no flags left in front. Very good. Congratulations to Harcourt. We have a winner for the fifth round of the B. We are down to two teams in this final round. Our next word, ambergris. Excuse me, ambergris. Ambergris, a waxy grayish substance from the intestines of sperm whales 
that are used as fixative and fragrance in the manufacture of perfumes. The word is ambergris. Signs up for the judges, please. And we move on. Our next word is liege. A lord or sovereign to whom allegiance and service are due according to feudal law. Signs up for the judges, please, for the word liege. And we move on. Our next word, orison, a prayer. The new pope turned first to an orison upon his election. Signs up for the judges, please, for the word orison. Our winner is the Boston Business Journal. Congratulations. Our final team for our final round. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the final round of the 24th annual First Literacy Spelling Bee? Let me please introduce the final contestants on the stage right to left by name. From Eaton Vance, Kate Johnson, Jessica Katz, Suzanne Lambert. From American Stock Transfer Company, James Burke, Paul Kim, and Ben Kremers. From the Boston Business Journal, Matthew Brown, Galen Moore, and Don Seifert. From Team Grubb, Katie Hunt, Evan Rosen, and Whitney Scharer. From Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, Sarah and Bari, Kristen Cladstrup, and Mark Wise. And last but not least, Public Spellevision, Christian Gay, Linda Harar, and Jesse Hergert. I wish all of you the best of luck in our final round. And we begin favorite word from this year's Spelling Bee. It's good. You're going to like it. The word is borborygmus, a rumbling noise produced by the movement of gas through the intestines. <laughs> yes. Uh, signs up, please, for our judges. We have one correct answer. We have no correct answers. On the, on the front and the end? Okay, Houghton Mifflin, Eaton Vance, and I can't see your name. Grub, Team Grub, all remain in competition. Uh, it's one flag on this ground. Correct. We apologize. If there are two flags in front of your team, there should only be one. So as soon as you lose one word, you are out of the final round competition. Apologies if that... Should we... Should... We can change it this year. Should, should we change it this year? Sure, it's two flags. Why not? As I said, the bar is still open, so that's great. It's two flags, why not? We're in our 24th year, it'll be 25 soon, this is all good. Let's move on. Everybody's still in play. The word, shh, is weald, a woodland. Much of the ancient forest of the weald had been cleared for farming. The word is weald. Signs up for the judges, please. Everybody moves on. Congratulations. The next word is pityriasis. Any of various skin diseases of humans and animals characterized by epidermal shedding of flaky scales. And signs up for the judges, please.
All wrong. Who has one flag still left? Houghton Mifflin, Eaton Vance, and Team Grubb, correct? Okay. Everybody got it wrong. It, you, you had two up before, correct? So you have one flag left. How many teams have one flag left? Eaton Vance, Team Grubb, and Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Okay. Three teams are left. Exactly. Okay. Our next word is Aurox, a wild ox of Europe, Northern Africa, and Western Asia. The tension is killing Team Grub. I can see your faces on the end of the table. If you're all happy with your answers, let's hold up our cards for the judges. Aurox is the word. Everybody moves on. Congratulations. Our next word, ecchymosis, the passage of blood from ruptured blood vessels into subcutaneous tissue marked by a purple discoloration of the skin. Cards for the judges, please. Two correct in the front, Houghton Mifflin incorrect in the back. We have two teams left. Eaton Vance and Team Grubb remain in the finals of this year's Spelling Bee. Shh. Our next word is domain. Possession and use of one's own land. Cards for the judges, please. And the winner of this year's Spelling Bee is Eaton Vance. Someone get Jeff Beal a drink, please. <laughs> Congratulations to our winners. Very well played. Kate, Jessica Cap, and Lambert from Eaton Vance. Congratulations. Jessica have both been on winning teams two years ago, so they were a shoe-in. And um, I just had the good luck to um, be in the right place at the right time and hear about this event and uh, asked to join in. She was nominated by a former member who said she is a crack speller. I can testify <laughs> that that is accurate. I think I can speak for Jessica and myself and say that Suzanne is by far the best speller of this group that and she is the secret great. weapon. No, no, no. We uh, had, when those prior rounds, there were a bunch that I didn't know that she knew. I mean, we each have our own I, Yes, exactly. I think there were some that we all knew that um, we would have gotten separately, but together we were a good team. It's a wonderful cause. Um, I'm very happy to be here supporting First Literacy. I think it's wonderful that Eaton Vance participates and would sponsor us to come, and I hope that everyone had a good time and uh, committed lots of money for a great cause.